Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I have with me an amazing and extremely experienced communication and branding guru from Krakow, Poland, Mr. Anisu K. Vergis. Anisu, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Um, Anisu is a global communication leader. He's a personal branding advocate. He's a speaker and he's an author. He's an author of a book titled Internal Communications, uh, Insights, Practices and Models. Um, And he was awarded by the PR Council of India as one of their Hall of Fame winners. So Anisu, let's talk a little bit about communication. Uh, Before that, tell me a little bit about your background and what got you to Poland. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on your show. And uh, again, thanks for the kind words of introduction. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm a, uh, I started my career in advertising and then I discovered my passion over time in employee communications or something called internal communications. Mm-hmm. And those days when I started my career, people felt that, you know, I was making a mistake because everyone was focused on external communications right. where there was a lot more money and, mm-hmm. you know, they said you will grow faster. But I stuck to my guns and, uh, became an uh, expert in that space. Um, and over time, like you mentioned, I know I've, I've authored a book, I've speaking at, spoken at various conferences, I've, I have blogged since 2006, one post per week. So th- mm-hmm. that's my contribution back to the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that um, has obviously been recognized by people. And over time, my con- current company noticed my work and they said, you know, there's an opportunity in Poland, would you like to take that up and help uh, scale up the center? And I mm-hmm. said, yeah, why not? And that's how this opportunity came about. Oh, wonderful. So let's talk communications now, Aniso. What are some of the common errors people make in interpersonal communication and how can one correct these? Yeah, I think, again, this is it. So communication goes quite broad when you when you think of both the interpersonal and and again when i talk about my work it's more related to communicating with audiences internally and externally but when you're talking of interpersonal communication and that's also as relevant in the workplace uh, i think the primary um, you know mistake people make is they try to uh, listen from their perspective they don't listen to understand they don't listen from the other person's context mm-hmm. and that uh, that is where some of the biggest gaps happen the second is, uh, you know, not acknowledging if there is an error, not acknowledging if there's an issue and uh, owning it up and owning it up immediately. Mm-hmm. And that, again, cre- creates a lot of resentment. Uh, and then uh, the inability to say sorry and move, moving on, that's another gap which, uh, which I feel comes in the way of uh, effective interpersonal communications. Okay. And, you know, you said that you have specialized in employee communication. Right. How does this differ? from uh, communication outside the organization? Yeah, it is It is uh, very clearly two very different um, portfolios of work, although today the worlds are blending mm-hmm. because what goes out externally also is uh, more or less uh, acknowledged internally. Mm-hmm. And with the pace of work and the pace of communication, democratization of content, uh, mm-hmm. anything that goes internally also shows up. I mean, you would have seen a lot of emails from CEOs suddenly floating out in social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it, uh, the internal communication, of course, focus primarily on employees um, as ambassadors and advocates of the brand, also about helping them be connected to the company's purpose, uh, helping them understand what the vision is, where the company is heading. Mm-hmm. And of course, the external part is more about making the brand and reputation stronger. So I think very clear demarcations, but definitely the worlds are blending. Mm, very interesting. And uh, what happens if the communication is not handled correctly? Uh, how does that impact uh, the corporate image? Yeah, I, I think from the context of, uh, you know, especially with the reputation at stake, most of the companies uh, realize that the primary uh, goal is to build trust. Mm-hmm. And if trust erodes, uh, that's when things go south and you mm-hmm. don't really... Uh, you're not able to recover from that. Mm. So I think the primary goal is to make sure that your stakeholders trust who you are. And there are global studies like the Edelman Trust Barometer keeps telling mm. us that uh, CEOs are not as trusted as employees anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, so employees are on the top notch. Likewise, you know, there is erosion of trust among media and government and 
uh, other entities. So trust is definitely a big, big part of it. The other is also when staff realize that there are too many rumors, uh, you know, they don't get the information on time, they don't mm-hmm. tend to believe what the organization is saying. And therefore, mm-hmm. again, it impacts and hinders um, how reputation and branding is done. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, I've often in my own career and in, in, in looking at so many other friends, what goes into curating a positive narrative? Mm-hmm. You know, you did mention one interesting point that employees, when they speak, they are more credible than the CEO of the company. But right. what goes into creating a positive narrative in a conflicting environment? Absolutely. And I think that's a great question because uh, it's it's about you know taking a stand. And I think sometimes uh, organizations, uh, and we can see it in, in very recent uh, situations, COVID-19 happened, and mm-hmm. there were brands which were trying to take advantage of the situation. Uh, they were trying to milk the you know the situation in terms of making sure that they were front and center of some of the uh, in, you know news that was happening. Mm. They were not willing to take a stand uh, against companies who were profiting from some of this. Mm. All that has impacted uh, the brand in the long run because people tend to uh, notice this, they tend to see this, and they realize that you know if the company is not trustworthy and not being authentic, then obviously it's not the best way to do it. Mm. The so taking a stand is very important, and again, of course, now with the recent um, war happening in Eastern Europe. Mm. Again, organizations who are continuing to engage and operate and all of that, they also are being constantly watched and people are not very happy about uh, their engagements and interventions Mm. that they're doing. Mm. So all these actions are really what matter. Finally, it's taking a stand uh, being clear about uh, your, um, you know, your position, and also calling it out very clearly—that's really what helps strengthen who you are as a company. Amazing. So, you know, I've been speaking to many people on the subject of uh, internal and external communication, mm-hmm. uh, and I think the biggest challenge comes when experts like you have to step in when a company or a management is in crisis. Mm-hmm. I'd like to give, uh, like you, to give me uh, your perspective on how do you tackle. Uh, such a scenario and if you have an example that would be wonderful yeah I mean crises uh, again people tend to react to it when it hits but often organizations who are ahead of the game are the ones who uh, have very strong business continuity practices who have strong um, you know risk mitigation practices in place so then it's not anymore a surprise you already are preempting some of this which happens Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there have been situations, even simple things like, you know, employees probably getting food poisoned in their cafeteria. It could be that as, you know, something which happens internally, or it could be about an employee who's uh, shared something negative about the company and it's snowballed into a big social media crisis. Mm. Um, So these kind of situations, again, it's all about the, the swiftness with which the leadership takes accountability and ownership. Um, They, uh, you know, come together as a team, have a clear narrative saying this is what we, this is what the situation is, informing all stakeholders immediately, putting a contingency plan, acknowledging that there's a mistake or if there is an issue which they need to tackle and then uh, making sure that all stakeholders are actively involved in this process rather than being kept in the dark. Mm. So I think these are the few ways in which uh, crises can be tackled effectively and also the reputation and, and branding is, you know, is kept intact. Fascinating. So one more question on communication before I move to personal branding. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was uh, starting off my own career with ITC and one of the things that we were always told mm-hmm. um, was that one of the norms for communication is that give all the bad news on a Friday and a good news on a Monday. Mm-hmm. But that was at the time of uh, the newspapers. Right. Today, the whole scenario has changed with social media. I'd mm-hmm. love to get your perspective. Yeah, it, I think you're right. And things, you know, the situation has changed, the world has moved on. And, uh, you know, with, like I said, the democratization of content, the access of information easily being available to employees and stakeholders mm-hmm. real time, uh, you know, there is not, 
nothing like the best time to share good news or bad news it's mm-hmm. really about do you have all the information with you do you you know is it is it written in the right way is it explained in the right context mm-hmm. um, are you empathetic and you know uh, able to engage the audiences in the right right approach mm-hmm. so it's not about uh, the wh- what or the the when of the communication it's also mm-hmm. about the how of the communication which matters so mm-hmm. i don't really believe that if you send something on a friday and hope that people people will sleep over it and they will uh, recover hopefully yeah. on monday that doesn't work because news keeps evolving people skip you know there's whatsapp there is telegram there's all mm-hmm. kinds of channels which mm-hmm. spreads word faster than company channels anyway very well said so let's sorry so let's now move to the next part of our conversation which is on personal branding right for my viewers and listeners let me start by asking you what is personal branding yeah i think there's uh, let me start by calling out a myth about personal branding because people think that personal branding is about yourself and it's about promoting yourself and marketing mm-hmm. yourself i think that's uh, the wrong interpretation the way i look at it it's it's an inside out approach mm-hmm. to presenting your authentic self and in the process of helping someone else become better mm-hmm. or helping someone else become successful and that's the only way you can build your personal brand you can't build your personal brand by tom toming about yourself or self promotion promotion or self marketing mm. so i think that is uh, according to me what uh, you know personal branding is and again i had uh, developed a model uh, on personal branding is called the 3c model mm-hmm. and this is again freely available for people to use uh, mm-hmm. and and that model calls out that there are broadly three key themes for you have clarity you, you need to have clarity you need to be consistent mm. and you need to be committed and mm. when you have these three in place um, while you are adding you know building expertise because you can't build a personal brand overnight it takes time so people need to understand that you first need to build expertise you need to add value mm. and then at some stage you may even want to reinvent yourself like you said you have over your you know journey as uh, as a professional you have been with itc and other companies and now you are running a podcast series which is globally renowned so obviously mm-hmm. this is a reinvention of yourself and right. so your personal brand has evolved through this entire model so mm-hmm. that's how i could explain it mm-hmm. very very interesting in fact i wrote a book on personal branding uh, i think in 2015 or 16 mm-hmm. um but my question to you is how important is it for people to make an investment in their personal brand and when should they start great question i think most people think that personal branding happens only when you are at a very late age in your career but mm-hmm. that's not true it's it's uh, about living it day in day out uh, because you as a person is carrying your personal brand in you know whatever form and work walk of life you are in mm-hmm. uh, so and again people tend to equate personal branding to social media which is again not true because your personal brand gets built offline and then it social media is a way to amplify it but mm-hmm. it's not the only way to promote it mm-hmm. and social and again personal branding doesn't have doesn't have an age to it you you can start at any age in fact i have seen youngsters uh, you know like for example there are uh, very young ethical hackers who have built personal brands in india and globally mm-hmm. writing books and becoming experts in their space so mm-hmm. at a very young age maybe in in the you know 14 to 17 or 19 years of age and they have mm-hmm. done all of this and at the other extreme you have uh, you know people like uh, you know sau marada timaka who's a you know 106 year old woman who has called who's called the mother of you know tree plantations and she has been awarded by the president of india because her goal was to you know ensure the environment was uh, safe and she yeah. was planting trees mm. now so it doesn't really matter at which age you are you can still build a personal brand fantastic uh, my next question to you ani so is that you know you just told me about the three c's of personal branding right. but what are some of the factors other than these three c's that right. uh, an individual needs to take into a consideration when they decide to build their own personal brand right so as as i mentioned the definition is about you know it's an inside out approach and therefore i think the starting point is to be yourself i mean you mm-hmm. can't be someone else because like Os- oscar wilde said it's everyone else is taken you have to be yourself correct the second part is you know you need to have a clear vision and strategy and a plan for yourself and and i think this is probably the hardest part because people struggle to say okay what am i here for in this world and mm-hmm. they don't they are not able to figure that out and of mm-hmm. course it's sometime a trial and error method but sometimes it's also about 
clarity and focus and determination saying that okay i want to get better in this area and become known in the space and then it the other factors are being consistent being committed being passionate because that's when people start seeing you as mm. the leader in that domain so in fact i read some interesting research which says that you can't uh build a personal brand unless you first fit in so once you fit in then you can you know expand and become mm. you know who you want to be so first you have to establish yourself in a domain and then you can branch out and be who you want to be as a mm. personal brand fascinating um and you also mentioned that social media is not the way to go but i i thought one of the major ways to reach out to many many more people to talk about who your authentic self is is social right. media Uh, yeah so again you're you're right like i said it's it's a way to amplify your personal brand but it's not the starting point of your personal branding journey because you you know there have been people who have started their journey on social media but then people have caught them out when because mm-hmm. they're not been authentic uh, you know there there you know i remember there's a story of a youtuber who who's a youngster and you know he, you know they he was caught uh, you know uh, shoplifting and you know and that kind of crashed mm. his uh, personal brand because on one hand you're trying to make millions through youtube videos and the other mm. hand you're not being you know authentic and you're having poor values and so i think the values are so crucial to this mm. so irrespective of which medium you choose you still need to be grounded in your values basic um and staying with social media there are so many diverse platforms Mm-hmm. and i'm sure that in your work also you must be using a lot of social media how does an individual determine which is the best platform f- uh, for her or him well again uh, this is you know this goes back to um, you know your personality it's mm-hmm. so there are people who are introverts there are people who are extroverts people who are in between the ambivert so again there is no one size fits all in terms of uh, social media and which platform to choose mm-hmm. uh, some people are comfortable with videos some are not they would rather be behind the scenes write a blog uh, you know write articles and content some are great with twitter some are not so again it really depends on your personal uh, preferences and your choice mm-hmm. and of course as uh, you know like you mentioned social media gives you the reach and the you know opportunity to amplify but if you're not comfortable with those channels you will come across as someone who's struggling and inauthentic and therefore it doesn't really help your personal brand in the long run of course you can should get trained you should get familiar with some of these more uh, advanced tools and more contemporary tools because uh, most of the youngsters are now on instagram or tiktok and snapchat and all of these channels so mm-hmm. yes the channel is not going to solve the problem of you know your personal brand it's only going to help amplify it or even put you back if you are not using it in the right way great response uh, my last question on personal branding is that is a behavioral change mm-hmm. a precursor to starting up an exercise on personal branding well it it again like i said it depends on what you're trying to achieve because finally it's also about being who you are and being your uh, true self and you mm. have to first be grounded uh, in in your values and you can't uh, try to have a different value to who you are and that mm. won't really so you know again people will catch you out very quickly so i think yeah behavioral change matters if you are uh, got some behaviors which you think are not in line with whom you want to convey and what you want to stand for then yes you need to invest in those areas but otherwise just being yourself and trying to promote who you are is mm. the right way to do it okay thank you so i'm going to now move to your book sure um tell me about your book so i have authored two books i think um, the first one uh, was on internal communications and that came out in 2012 and mm-hmm. uh, you know related to uh, how people and again it's not just meant for practitioners it's meant mm-hmm. for students it's meant for academicians uh, the focus those days uh, was that uh, people were not even aware and again i'm talking about india not even aware of what internal communication stood for and i mm. used to teach at a few b schools and a lot of students used to come up and ask me what is this topic about because we mm. only hear of pr and you know events and other stuff mm. so um, and i had started blogging in 2006 and when i realized that there wasn't a book in place uh, i thought maybe it's a good opportunity to share this knowledge with the wider population and that's how 
the genesis of the book uh, triggered and and thankfully at that stage one of the publishers reached out and said there's no one who's authored a book on this topic would you be keen and i said okay let me give it a shot mm-hmm. it took me a few years to put the content together but nevertheless it it came out the second uh, book was most recent and 2021 i authored a book called get intentional mm-hmm. and this is um, related to life skills and personal branding mm-hmm. and again the the reason why i connected both of these because um, on one hand personal branding helps you uh, showcase your authentic self and an inside out approach but on the other hand you also need to know how to navigate life because not many people teach you uh how to do this and uh, there are different uh, <clears throat> pitfalls there are different gaps and uh, there are certain skills which you need to invest in mm. and uh, through some you know storytelling i've kind of highlighted some of these from my personal experience mm-hmm. and that's what uh, and this book also covers a lot of interviews with people who have built their personal brands and that's what the collection of uh, this this book is about so these two books uh, are uh, what have authored so far amazing amazing i'll certainly look for your books on amazon Um so I need some time for one more question mm-hmm. and my next question is that for a person like you who has worked in India worked outside India done so mm-hmm. much work on communications personal branding what would you say are three key life lessons mm-hmm. that you would like uh, our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation Well I think the the first would be to have a clear purpose and stick to it uh, and again like I gave the example of my case of you know sticking to my guns about internal communications when mm-hmm. people were telling me you won't get paid enough you won't grow yeah. in your career all of that so I think primarily I think that's crucial if you don't have that clear purpose then it's obviously hard to establish yourself and build your personal brand mm. uh, the other is to be committed uh, and be consistent and the third is be authentic and communicate your destination because mm-hmm. if people don't know where you're heading they can't help you so i think it's a journey which uh, requires all people to help you as you move along your journey it's not a it's not a you know one person doing this you know it's it takes a village to make a person as well as what they say mm. very interesting Uh, and it's on that note uh, thank you so much for speaking to me thank you for talking to me about communication and all the intricacies of internal and external communication thank you for talking to me about personal branding and you know all that goes into uh, you know building our personal brands as we go through life and right. finally thank you for talking to me about your books i'm hoping to see more books coming from you thank, thank you, you again so and good luck appreciate it thank you so much for having me on your show thank you Thank you for listening to the brand called You video cast and podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.